P.A.'s hunting dog Whiskey had seen him fall and being the good dog that she is had ran over to keep him safe from getting attacked or trampled by one of our pigs. She stood beside Doc Wilson and barked but all her barking did was get the pigs to running scared even more. Most people think pigs are gentle animals but the exact opposite is true. They bite hard enough to a pair of leather shoes and if you get your hand to close to them when they're eating they'll chomp it right off without giving you any warning. Given the chance they can run faster than a grown man and I've even seen one run right through a soldwood fence without getting hardly a scratch or get slowed down none. Connie, who had been inside washing clothes, had heard whiskey barking as well as the pigs squealing and everyone shouting so she went to see what the heck was going on. That is when she seen Doc Wilson lying on the ground with Whiskey sitting beside his head and ran out to make sure the Doc was okay. When Pa and I had returned I didn't see Doc Wilson laying on the ground beside his car with Connie and Meg Jin kneeling beside him but I guess Pa could see from his side of the truck cause he threw open his door and jumped out of the passenger side even before we had come to a stop. Pa. I screamed as I panicked and jumped on the brake pedal with both feet causing the truck to skidded to a stop. I threw the shifter into park just as three of the pigs ran in front of me closely followed by Kristen. Between the excitement of driving PA's truck and realizing that something was wrong here at home, any awareness of the condition inside of my diaper had been pushed out of my head. However, when I opened the truck door and started to slide off the phone books a confused and remarkable sensation began to take hold of me as my poop smeared backside slid inside my diaper. It felt like I was moving, but my diaper and pants were staying in place. When my feet hit the gravel driveway I wanted to run to see what was going on but I had a bit of a situation myself that caused me to hesitate. When I had slid off the phone books and out of the truck the sensation I had felt was the poo as it was squeezed out of the back of my diaper like toothpaste from a tube. With my undershirt and button-up shirt tucked into my pants my poo was contained but I could feel it against my back and what was worse, I could smell it now too, that meant everyone else could too. It felt unusually heavy and bulky like I'd been holding it in all day. The smell, well that is difficult to describe, it was like no smell that had ever come out of me before or since. It made me gag and I waved my hand in front of my nose in an attempt to get some breathable air into my lungs. As I took a couple steps toward the house uncertainty grew with every step, I convinced myself that whatever was going on, it didn't need me involved. I just wanted to sneak into the house and get changed but that didn't happen. My stink was overwhelming me and I wondered how something so horrible could come out of me. I froze in mid-stride when I heard someone shout, half pint, look out. The next thing I knew I was being dragged across the gravel with my arms clamped around one of the pig's neck and its ear was slapping me in the face. I got this one. I bellowed but in fact I wasn't even slowing the dang pig in the least bit. Go little pants, go. Someone cheered. When I lost my grip I went tumbling head over heels before coming to a stop flat on my back inside the pig pin looking up at the sky while laughing the whole time. Benjamin was the first to get to me, holy buckets. Are you okay? He asked sounding amazed, amused and scared all at the same time. I was still laughing when I said, now that is what I call fun. At the time I had no idea what pig it was that I'd latched onto but Christopher later told me that I'd been blindsided by the biggest pig we got. She drug me quite a ways before I lost my grip on her but I must a scared her enough cause she had run right back into the pig pin. After that, all the pigs followed her in with a bit of persuasion by Pa with his cattle prod. Benjamin and Kristen had helped me to my feet and the three of went over the fence on the far side of the pin cause the pigs were coming in from the other end. By the time all the pigs were back in the pin everyone, Meg Jin included, were covered in mud, dirt and grass stains. Christopher was the only one that got hurt. He had a fat lip where one of the pigs had head-butted him and Vincent Lee had ripped up the knees of his pants. To say that I was dirty would be like saying that Mexico has a lot of Mexicans. I was covered head to toe, top to bottom and everywhere else with pig filth. And I sure didn't smell like a field of daisies that's for sure but I was just glad that pig pucky helped to mask my own wretched stench. 
I laughed even more when I realized that my left pants pocket was full of gravel and grass. Now how do you suppose that happened? Benjamin said trusting his hand into my pocket and pulling out a fist full of pebbles. I don't think I stopped laughing until the lot of us realized that Doc Wilson had been hurt. He'd hit his head good and par and Christopher had to carry him into the house where they laid him on the couch. After a while he woke up but he said he had a whopper of a headache and after resting up a bit was laughing about the whole thing. I on the other hand wasn't allowed into the house as I was told to stand beside the front porch along with Kristen who'd slide on her belly through a pile of poo. Benjamin and Vincent Lee took turns hosing us down while the two of us stripped down, me to my birthday suit and Kristen to her pink underwear. I allowed Kristen to go up and take a bath first while I hung my clothes on the wash line and allowed Benjamin and Vincent Lee to use them as water cannon targets. They both took great delight in repeatedly shooting me over and over again as I hung up my dirty clothes. Two points if you get him in the head. Benjamin sang and Vincent Lee squirted me in the face. Guys. The clothes not me. I griped. Five points if you get him you know where. Vincent Lee cheered and Benjamin shot me right where it counts. Guys stoop. I whined but I didn't mean it. Heck, I think that even if it was twenty below and ten feet of snow was on the ground, playing with the garden hose and squirting each other would still be fun. Yeah of course it was cold but heck, that is what hot chocolate, fireplaces and warm baths are for right? Shivering and teeth chattering I left them to their water games and streaked into the house. Connie was coming out of the living room and I quickly asked, is Doc Wilson okay? It's just a goose, she said dismissively.